Chan Sawab would often recommend starting meditation by generating a sense of confidence, a sense of inspiration that what we're doing here is something really important, or training the mind, or developing the mind's good qualities and learning how to let go of its bad qualities, because the mind has both. You see this clearly as soon as you try to focus on the breath. Other thoughts will come in that will try to pull you away. And sometimes they're neutral thoughts, and sometimes they're relatively okay. There might be thoughts about generosity or thoughts about other good things. But sometimes they're just downright embarrassing to think that that kind of thought is going to go through your head. And so one of the customs of the Noble Ones is to learn how to develop a sense of delight in abandoning unskillful qualities and developing skillful ones. And the sense of delight is something you have to work on sometimes, because often the unskillful qualities are things you like, and the unskillful qualities are going to require some effort, and some days you just don't feel up to that effort. So it's good to stop and think about what's good about what we're doing here, why you want to be here, sitting here with your eyes closed. And the reasons are going to be different for different people. But it basically comes down to the fact that the mind is what determines your life. And your state of mind is going to determine what you're going to do, and what you're going to do is going to determine the things that happen. And so you want to look into this source. The source is immediately available. That's a really good thing. It's not like our fate has been written in the past, when we're under some compulsion to act out something that was decided a long time ago. Some conditions in life can be traced back to past actions. But the Buddha's image of our past karma is like a big field, and there are lots of different seeds in that field. It depends on which ones you're going to water with delight, which ones you're going to water with craving. And craving is not always bad. If you didn't have the craving to practice, it wouldn't happen. If you didn't have delight in the practice, it wouldn't happen. So we're deciding right now which of the many seeds in our past karma we're going to cultivate. Let's cultivate the seeds for concentration, cultivate the seeds for peace of mind, cultivate the seeds for insight, the seeds that will help lead us to freedom. This is a possibility that's available to all of us. It depends on the choices we're making right now. So it's a good thing. We've got this opportunity. Let's make the most of it. You've got the breath coming in, going out. You've got the mind here thinking and aware. So learn how to think about the breath in a way that's really helpful. John Fuang would often counsel two things, learn how to be observant and learn how to use your ingenuity. As the Buddha said, being observant is one of the prime requisites that he would ask for in any student, learning how to look at what you're doing. And there are many things that he would leave up to your powers of observation. He once said there are two kinds of robe cloth, two kinds of alms food, two kinds of lodging, two kinds of cities and towns, two kinds of countrysides, and two kinds of individuals that you're going to be associating with. And in each case, he said, there's the ones to be associated with and the ones not to be associated with. And how do you know which is which? Well, by observing. Just look at your own mind when you're using a particular kind of robe, he'd say, or alms food or lodging. In other words, look at your surroundings. Look at the things you're using in your daily life. If these tend to 
lead to the increase in unskillful qualities and decrease in skillful ones, and they're not to be used. And vice versa, if they lead to the increase of skillful qualities and the decrease of unskillful ones, then it's okay to use them. The same way with the location, what kind of city and town you're staying in or what kind of countryside, what kind of people you're hanging around with. In other words, you have to learn how to observe for yourself how things are going what's helpful to your practice and what's not. There are the rules he laid down in the precepts and the rules of the Vinaya to give you some guidelines, but there's an awful lot that you have to learn how to observe on your own. And the same applies to your breath. When you focus in different parts of the body, you'll find that you get different results. When you work with the breath in different ways, sometimes you want to work with the breath in a way that's relaxing and soothing, and other times you want to work in a way that's more energizing. I've personally found that with a low pressure system going through right now, if I don't breathe heavily, I'm going to get headaches. So this is a case where you really do need to energize things through the way you breathe. But this is something that depends on each individual. There are no hard and fast rules here. And similarly with pains in the body, sometimes if you focus directly on the pain, insight arises. You understand, okay, this is how the mind creates problems around pain. And other times when you focus directly on the pain, it makes things worse. That's the case when you have to learn how to work around the pain. Again, use the breath, whatever parts of the body are comfortable, as your foundation, as your main focus, and then think of that comfortable, effervescent breathing just bubbling right through the pain, or seeping through the pain, or whatever you find works to help deal with the pain, and so you, to the point where you are able to sit with the pain and watch it, learn how to comprehend it. Because it's only when you comprehend not only the pain, but your reaction around the pain that's then that you can be unburdened of the pain. The other quality you need to use in addition to being observant is your own ingenuity. Again, this is a John Fu. I've been trying to trace the different uses of the word ingenuity in Pali, Bhatibhana. And the Buddha often recommends it as a good quality, but he never really defines it, doesn't give examples. He simply says it's something you really want to develop. So here again, when you're dealing with an issue with the breath, or dealing with pain, or dealing with distractions, you may find that you take all the old techniques you've learned from other people, you've read about, and for some reason they don't seem to work. That's when you have to use your ingenuity. What might work now? Think about alternative approaches, or ways of taking the basic principles, say, that you've learned from others, and how to tweak them here and tweak them there. So you get something that does work for you. And again, what works for you today may not work tomorrow. So tomorrow you need to use more ingenuity. And what's sobering about all this is that it does depend on your own powers of observation. It depends on your self-honesty, whether you honestly do want to develop skillful qualities. For instance, dealing with the hindrances. Sensual desire comes in, ill will comes in, sloth and torpor, restlessness and anxiety, uncertainty come in, and often you tend to side with them. The desire comes in, and the thing you're thinking about really is desirable. Ill will comes in, the person that you're feeling ill will for really is, really is horrible. Sloth and sleepiness come in, and yeah, you think about how much your body's been working today and how much you haven't had a chance to rest, and yeah, you want to give into it, and so on down the line. If that's your attitude, then no matter how good the techniques are, they're not going to work. 
You have to learn how to develop a sense of delight in letting go of the hindrances. The Buddha, as you think about them, is slavery, going through a desolate area, an illness, a debt. In other words, learn how to see the hindrances as things that you really do want to get past. That's so how you develop a sense of delight in abandoning and delight in developing. So when things aren't going well, stop and ask yourself, okay, am I really delighting in what I'm supposed to be doing here, or, or does my delight li lie someplace else? And you don't have to accept that sense of delight as a given. If you find you're delighting in encouraging unskillful qualities, you can remind yourself, hey, wait a minute, this is not in our best interest here. Using the word are in the sense of the whole committee and the mind. Just because there's a particular emotion coming up, a particular feeling come up in the mind, that doesn't mean that's the one that you have to deal with right now, or you have to take on right now. Remember, there's that whole field of potentials, and you're watering the wrong seed. You're watering the thistles. You're, you're watering all the brambles and burrs. What you want to do is water the good plants, the ones that provide fruit and flowers and shade. They're there in the field, too. So look for the good potentials inside and learn how to delight in watering them. Because that's when the meditation will develop results that are really worthwhile. That's the best use of our time here.